Good morning, Lake Ridge. It's so great to see your smiling faces, so welcome, and all of you joining us online and Facebook and through our website, welcome. I'm Suzanne Wampler, the Director of Pastoral Care, and we are so glad that you're here, especially those of you who are here in person. We want to tell you that we are committed to making this a safe environment for you so that um, when you come, you feel comfortable. We are cleaning and doing all the extra tasks that need to be done to keep us safe during this virus. We appreciate you loving each other and respecting each other and continuing to social distance during this time as well. So thank you for that. If you're a visitor here, we have a special welcome for you, and we'd like you to stop by the welcome desk when you leave today. We'd like to put a name with your face and see if we can help get you connected here at Lake Ridge. We believe in prayer here at Lake Ridge, and we want to lift up your needs. So if you have a prayer request, we would love to hear from you. You can pray, um, you can send those prayer requests in several ways. You can do it from Instant Messenger, from Instagram, Facebook, or the old-fashioned way you can catch me and ask me to pray for you, and I'll be glad to do that as well. Um, but today, starting today, we have a special um, opportunity for you every Sunday, starting today, between the services, starting at 1010, we will have some prayer team members down in the Wesley Chapel. And if you would like to stop and just share whatever's on your heart, they would be glad to pray with you. So just starting today, if you're interested in, in stopping by the chapel, please do that and let us help lift up your needs. And I know you can't believe it because it's snuck up on me too, but the season of Christmas is upon us. And we want to decorate our sanctuary and our building in a beautiful way, but we need your help. So what we call Deck the Halls is next Sunday. So we need you to stay and help after the 1030 service if possible. It will go really quickly if we have a lot of people stopping to help. So we will social distance, so wear your mask and just come be ready to enjoy the music and the fellowship and make our church beautiful. And speaking of Christmas, it's time to start thinking about the poinsettias that we use to decorate our church. Those will go on sale starting today, and they will go through December the 9th. That's a Wednesday. They are $25 each and may be purchased in honor or memory of a loved one. So if you're interested in that, be sure and fill out the form. There's some on the welcome desk, or you can call the front office or you can go online if you're an online person and request one of those poinsettias. Also, I wanted to bring to your attention, I've noticed some of you stopping at the welcome desk and scanning your QR code on your phone, so good job on that. There's also other announcements in the bulletin that you can pull off of your phone from the QR code. So if you need help with that, just stop and someone out there will help you. Now, we would like to begin our opening act of worship with our affirmation of faith. Would you please stand and join me? This is a unison reading, so please read with me. We believe in God, maker of all things, provider of all things, who loves all people. We follow Jesus, in whom salvation has come to us. He sees us for who we are, heals our wounds of our hearts, and makes us new. In his death and resurrection, we see the deepest truth of life. We live by the power of the Holy Spirit, who empowers us for self-giving love. We give thanks for the church, the body of Christ, and for the gift of forgiveness, the power of resurrection, and the mystery of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. It's so good to see you all this morning. I just want to say thank you for those of you that are coming, for those of you that are joining us on the live stream, for making it a priority to be a part of worship this morning. Would you join us as we worship? Holy flame with 
Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We praise you for the blessings that you give us. Father, in this day and time, there are so many concerns and so many worries before us. Lord, I just ask that you would just take our thoughts and our actions and turn them to positive focus towards you. Father, our land is so dry, we ask for rain. We just ask that you pour moisture over our land. I ask that you would be with each person and meet them wherever their needs are this morning. If any individual or family members are sick, Lord, I just ask that you would heal them. I lift up individuals working in the healthcare field. Lord, just give them strength and perseverance as they continue to serve during this trying and difficult time. Father, we know that people are surrounded by financial strain during this time. Lord, I ask that you would just give them guidance with their resources. Father, those that are feeling depressed or lost or just lonely, Lord, we ask that you would just fill them. Give them your peace and your grace. Lord, we're asking you to heal our country and our people. We thank you for loving us and for reminding us that we need you for our guidance and our strength. Now hear our words as we lift the Lord's Prayer as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As 
you stand and we continue in worship this morning. I want to ask you to do something just a little bit differently this morning. This goes for you all at home watching on the live stream as well. I want you to take, just for this one song as we worship, I want you to take some kind of a different posture of worship than what you would normally do. If you normally stand, I invite you to sit. If you normally sit, I invite you to stand. If you normally stand, I invite you to just lift your hands to him. If you want to kneel in your pew, I invite you to kneel and offer your worship that way. If you want to walk out into the aisle and lay prostrate in the middle of the aisle, I invite you to do that. But I invite you to offer yourself in some kind of physical posture that you are not used to doing this morning. Step outside of that box a little bit and offer yourself physically, vocally, emotionally to God and worship this morning. as we 
as we enter into this time of offering. Good morning, Lake Ridge. Christmas is right around the corner. And with the changes and adjustments we've had to make all year, Christmas Eve will be no exception. In order for everyone to safely enjoy our annual candlelight Christmas Eve services with your family and friends, we're implementing a new reservation system. This system will allow us to socially distance families and maintain a healthy place of worship. This year, we will also be offering four different services. The first opportunity to worship will be Wednesday, December 23rd at 6.30 p.m. inside the sanctuary. There'll be three opportunities on Christmas Eve, starting with a sanctuary service at 4 p.m., followed by a Lake Ridge praise service at 5, and ending with the final sanctuary service at 6.30. There will be plenty of opportunities to worship together as a family. Reservations will open on December 1st with a link available via the website, social media, and through email. Now, if technology isn't your thing, don't worry. You can reserve a spot by calling the front office at the church. Reservations will close on Sunday, December 20th, so don't wait to reserve a spot. Although this year may be ever-changing, the God we worship is not. So let's rest in that truth this holiday season. Thank you again, Lake Ridge, for your flexibility and patience as we try to come together and remember the true meaning for this holiday season. Now, let's get back to worship. As we continue to um, have a beautiful worship, we now come to our time of offering. Um, we are still not passing the plates, but there are envelopes in the pews. If you would like to use those, just drop your gifts in the offering plate as you leave the service this morning, or you can continue to give online or through text if you would rather do that. Um, we, would you please pray with me now? Heavenly Father, we just lift up these gifts to you. We thank you for the blessings that you have given us. So take these tithes, offerings, and extra dollars and use them for your kingdom. In your name we pray, amen. I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out Oh yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all Choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. 
Good morning, church. Good morning to everyone worshiping with us through the live stream. We are so glad that you would join us this morning and be a part of our worship together. This morning we're going forward in our series that is entitled Capturing Rebellious Thoughts. And one of the things that we've talked about over and over again in this series is the idea that your life moves in the direction of your strongest thoughts. I want to restate that a different way that I hope might give us even more clarity about this. And I'm, here's how I'm going to say it. If you don't change how you're thinking, you can't change your life. We've been looking at the Apostle Paul because he's an incredible example for us of someone who learned how to master his thoughts. He had success in this area. And so I would believe that, that by looking at him, hopefully we can gain some principles and thoughts that will help all of us with being able to, to master our thoughts and, and to capture our rebellious thoughts and make them obedient to Christ. The key passage of Scripture that we've used in this entire series has come to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, and it says this, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now, it used to be that, that there was this idea that once you had reached adolescence, that your brain was pretty much fixed. And what we know now from research is that isn't true at all. Each time we have a thought, it creates what's called a neural pathway. And the more you think a thought, the easier it is to think that thought again. Now, that's a really wonderful thing if you are thinking about whatever is pure and lovely and holy and good, right? If you're thinking that, that's a, a wonderful thing. But here's the problem. For a lot of us, that's not where our thoughts are. A lot of us have negative thoughts or, or bad thoughts, and we allow those thoughts to play themselves over and over again in our minds, and it gets easier and easier to do each time that it happens. This morning, I want to talk to you about a, a new idea that we haven't discussed yet in this series, and it is the idea of cognitive bias. And I just want to read a definition to us this morning. It is a mistake in reasoning based on personal preferences or beliefs. And so what it is, is it becomes a mental filter that we have that we view things through, but it's not necessarily accurate. As a matter of fact, sometimes what it does is it leads us astray and causes us to take up action in our lives that we don't need to act upon. And so what happens is that it, it distorts things for us. It, it discolors situations, and we see them in a way that creates a bias for us. And so here's an example of that. Let's say that you're in a, a workplace environment, right? And let's say that there's a boss or a supervisor or someone, and that person, she decides that she's going to give feedback to her staff, right? And, and so she's got a couple of people that are sitting there and they're hearing the exact same words. They're in the same room at the same time, all right? But then the only thing that is different is the filter for each one of them. So you've got one of, of the team members there on staff and, and they hear that and they're thinking, I'll give you some feedback. You know, I don't, I don't think I like that. You know, like they, they hear it and they get kind of defensive, right? And, and that's how they take it. And then you've got the other staff member and they're hearing those exact same words and they're thinking, wow, you know, I, I don't think I've ever thought of that before. This is really helpful information to have. Same exact message. Two different people, but they hear it in a completely different way. 
The only difference that they have is the filter through which they are hearing that. When I think of this, uh, I, I think about our perception of how we understand and see God as Father. If you grew up, let's say, with a wonderful father, with a, a father who knew how to bless you and nurture you, encourage you, provided for you, did all the things that a dad is supposed to do, guess what research tells us? It's easier for you to think of God as being your heavenly father. You know what else we know? If you grew up with a dad who wasn't a very good father, who for whatever reason wasn't able to live into his fatherly responsibilities, maybe an abusive father, or a father that was absentee, guess what that means for you? It's more difficult for you to view God and understand him as a heavenly father. It's a cognitive bias that develops within each one of us. Now to deal with this issue of cognitive bias as we're thinking about how do we capture these rebellious thoughts, how do we demolish them, how do we make them obedient to Christ, I want to talk to you about a tool that I think is available to all of us, something that we're all capable of doing, and it is the idea of reframing something. And so when we think about reframing, it's creating for us a different way of understanding, a different way of looking at something by changing the meaning of what we're experiencing. I think about the story about the little boy who went out in his backyard to play baseball and he had his bat and he had the ball and he uh, says to himself out in his backyard, I am the greatest batter in the world. And he throws the baseball up and he swings and he misses. But he's not detoured, he, he picks the ball up and he's got his bat and he says one more time, I am the greatest batter in the world. And he throws the ball up and he takes his bat and he swings and he misses again. All right, no, no problem. And so he reaches down, he grabs the ball and he declares a third time, I am the greatest batter in the world. And he tosses the ball up, he grabs the bat and he swings and he misses again three times and you're out and he thinks to himself for just a second and then he declares I am the greatest pitcher in the world I just struck out the greatest batter in the world now that may seem a little bit silly but it goes toward this idea that we can reframe a situation by choosing to think about it differently let me uh, you know and some people call this uh, cognitive restructuring if you want to get technical about it if you're a simpler mind like mine we'll just call it thinking differently and what some of us need to learn to do is to think differently about our lives and some of the situations and circumstances in which we encounter let me ask you a, a question are you going to have a great day today you are? All right, because, you know, some people hear that question. It's like, yeah, my day is going to be great. Other people go, no, my day is going to be average. Some people may go, no, my day is going to be kind of pathetic, right? Now, how do you answer that question? What, what determines if you're going to have a great day today? Well, your thinking does. And so if you think you're going to have a great day today, you'll probably have a great day today. But if your mind is kind of in a negative uh, mindset and, and that's how you're looking at it, guess what your experience is probably going to be? It's probably going to be negative. If, if you look at life through the lens where you believe that God is good, good is probably what is going to come your way during the course of your day. Church, we cannot control what happens to us. But what we can control is our response to what happens to us. Let me, let me say that again, 
That's a really important thing for us to, to grasp and hold on to. You can't control, you absolutely cannot control what's going to happen to you, but you can control what your response is going to be. I think about this, and I think our inspiration is absolutely Paul. Paul had a calling on his life to preach, and it was Paul's dream that he was going to go to Rome, and he was going to preach, and what happens for Paul is he ends up in prison instead, right? That's not what he had, had dreamed of. Paul's dream is one thing, and then here's his reality, right? This is what's actually taking place. These are the circumstances in which I find myself, now, some people would think that, that Paul would have written to the Philippian church in Philippians 1, 12 and 13 in the NWV version, the New Winers version, these words. Now, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me really stinks. That's not what Paul did. Paul took the situation that he found himself in, he took his circumstances, and he reframed them, right? He chose to think differently about the situation in which he was in, even though it was not what he had desired. And here is what Paul says to the Philippians in Philippians 1, verses 12 and 13. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Remember, I can't control what happens to me, but I can control how I respond to it. And so Paul says... This, this has served to advance the gospel. And then he goes on, and in verse 14, he says this, And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare to proclaim the gospel without fear. So for Paul, he looked and said, Okay, I'm in prison. This is my reality. This is what I'm dealing with. But you know what? I get a new guard every eight hours. Right? And so that's an opportunity. And so every time I get a new guard, I've got eight hours to share with that person about the transforming love of Jesus Christ. Every eight hours, I've got a captive audience. They've got to sit here with me. They don't have any choice. And so I am going to just talk about Jesus with all that I've got. And one person at a time, eight hours at a time, Paul chooses to reframe the situation. And what does it do? It advances the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what I wanted, not what I was dreaming of, not what I thought I was going to be doing. But here is what can happen when I take on the mind of Christ. And I allow his purposes to dwell within me. So even when life doesn't allow us to be in control, the one thing that we can do, the one thing we can control is our response. I want to just offer us a few principles this morning of ways in which I believe that we can do what Paul did as we reframe our situations as we reframe whatever is happening in our lives and the first principle is this thank God for what didn't happen have you ever had something come your, your way in life and it's not anything you would have wished for right and it is something and you think oh this is this is awful but then what if you were to stop and instead of dwelling on what just happened, what if you were able to think about what did not happen? So, so here's an example. Let's say that you've got a really pressing project at work, 
and there's a lot on the line with this project and you don't get the project in on time and that means you don't get the bonus. It means that, that things aren't gonna happen the way that you had really desired that they would. But what if instead, after when that happens, you think, but at least I've got a job. <laughs> at least I've still got a paycheck. Have you ever been involved in a wreck? Isn't it the worst? Isn't it just a sick feeling when somebody like backs into your car or something and you hear the crunch of the metal and stuff and you get out and you look at it and you think to yourself, this is going to be thousands of dollars to repair for this. Even a small dent is going to cost thousands of dollars and I'm going to have to file with my insurance and then the deductible and, and does this other driver even have insurance, Right? But what if in a moment like that, if you stop and you say this, but at least no one was hurt. Cars are repairable. Cars can be replaced. People cannot. So at least no one was hurt and everyone is okay. Maybe uh, there's another scenario. What, what about this one? I, I love this one. If, if you ever fly very much uh, for business or, or for just for pleasure or whatever, right? Have you ever been at the airport and your flight gets delayed and it's just like a groan, right? Like, you know, if the announcement goes up at the gate, you collectively, the people that are seated there just go, oh, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, Great. Now my flight's going to be late and it's going to take me this much longer to get there, you know, and all of those kinds of things. But what if instead you said to yourself, but at least I am not up in the air and they're saying we're going to have to make an emergency landing. You see, you can do a lot of reframing by choosing to thank God for what didn't happen. Let me give you another principle, and that is to practice pre-framing your situations, to pre-frame how you're going to respond, all right? So this is where you decide in advance, before something is going to take place, what your response is going to be to it. Now, at the Lloyd House, this is how we think of this one. Uh, when Joni and I were getting ready to move to Lubbock, we came here twice and twice we made offers on homes. And both times for completely strange and weird circumstances, both deals fell through. That meant we were in Orlando. We did not have time to come back to Lubbock to look for another house, right? But you got to have a place to live kind of thing. The movers are going, and what address do you want us to deliver all this stuff to? And so our realtor contacts us and he says, there's a great house on the market. And he knew just intuitively that we would love this house because he had looked at who knows how many of them with us. And he said, I think this is great. Can you get back here? And we're like, no, we, we can't. Our, our girls have different things. We've got stuff with our church. Like there's no way for us to come back. He said, well, I can just tell you, this house is not gonna be on the market if you wait until that date to come back here. He's like, I've been a realtor for a long time and just trust me. So you know what he did? He got out his phone, right? And he FaceTimes us. And he's going, he's like, all right, I'm turning right now. This is a closet and he's opening the door and he's look like this and, and showing us everything. And then Joni's like, but, but what does the, the street look like? Are, are there any cars that are up on blocks or anything like that, you know, kind of thing? So you know what he did? He got in his car, and he's driving with one hand, and he's got his phone out the other one, and he's going, this is the street. These are your neighbor's homes, you know, kind of thing. And you know what we did? Sounds crazy, but we made an offer on the house without ever having walked inside of it, right? And so then moving day came, and Joni and Madeline and I and the two cats are all in the van together. And, uh, and we've been on the road for 20-something hours about the time we made it just past Abilene. And Joni looks over at Madeline and at me and she says, is anybody else feeling kind of nervous about seeing our, our new house for the first time? And I responded and said, nope. Not at all, because you know why? We're going to love it. We're going to love everything 
about it. And it was just this projection of faith. It was this idea, of, we're going to pre-frame this one because it's ours. Like, like you know, the, everything is in the loop and, and for us to happen. And you know why? I would share with you, we walked in and we did love it. It was absolutely great. Now, here's what pre-framing might look like that would be more helpful to you. Let's say that you know you're going to have a really tough day or that you're facing a tough experience that it is going to be coming your way and you can anticipate this pre-framing might look like this it might be a declaration that says i know that the god who is within me is greater than he who is in the world what if you what if you think that way what if you put that in advance of dealing with that difficulty do you think it might make a difference? All right, here's a, a third one that I want to give us. And that is you're going to look for God's goodness. Because what we know is if you look for things to be bad, you're going to find the bad. And if you look for things that are, are negative, you're going to find the negative. If you look at something with a critical mind, you are going to pick it apart right? That is just the way that it's going to be. But church, if we look at things through the lens that God is good, that changes everything. You see, for a lot of us, the problem is, is that we don't bother to interpret our circumstances through the truth that God is good, you determine what is going to happen to you, or at least the meaning of what is going to happen to you. You determine that. You determine the meaning of what is going to happen to you. And the problem is, is that uh, a lot of times what we're looking for isn't going to lead us where we want to be. Think about the difference between a couple of birds, between a vulture and a hummingbird. What did vultures find? Roadkill. <laughs> they find dead things, right? Because that is what they are looking for. What does a hummingbird find? Sweet things. Nectar. Why does a hummingbird find that? Because that's what a hummingbird is looking for. What are you looking for the problem is is that a lot of us see the bad because we're looking for the bad and the mistake is is that i think for a lot of us what we do is we try to interpret who god is based on our circumstances tell me if this isn't true and so if 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 something is difficult then god is not good if i'm going through something hard God's not good. But if everything's great, well, God is good. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Who God is is not dependent upon our circumstances. Look for the goodness of God. Look at the world through the goodness of God, and even when you're having like your worst day, God is still good. Church, here is what we know, that Paul's example shows us that if we will reframe our situation, that it changes everything. The question is, will we discipline ourselves to do that would you pray with me father god it's pretty clear from what paul did that we can choose to reframe our thoughts we see the the power of what happened in his situation and lord i pray that it would inspire us today that it would cause us to to be able to evaluate our own circumstances our own lives 
And Lord, that it would help us to think about our mindsets. Lord, we don't want to have these rebellious, irrational, crazy thoughts. We don't want to be negative. Lord, we pray that you would help us to trust in the fact that you are good and that your love for us endures forever. Lord, there are a lot of us who are are facing difficult things right now, and we pray that you would focus our hearts and our minds on you and on you alone, because we know that can make all the difference in the world. We pray and we ask all of this this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you stand and we continue in worship this morning, I invite you to respond to Lyndall's message by taking all of those fears, all of those negative thoughts that you have this morning and place them in the mighty fortress that is our God. Amen. Before we uh, have our benediction today, I want to ask a favor uh, of, uh, of you. Uh, first of all, let me say this. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making worship a priority. To those of you at home, thank you for, for getting up and, uh, and turning this on and participating in worship today. Uh, we're living in an unprecedented situation in our world right now. We're, we're dealing with difficulties, and we need to kind of reframe some of that, Right? And so can you help us reframe how people are thinking about worship? I think we've got several folks who've kind of maybe gotten out of the practice or the habit, right? And, and we need to help them reframe that. So now, if you know someone that needs to stay home because of their health so that they can stay well, then that's what they need to do. We love and we miss all those people who, for that is their situation. But if you've got friends and you think to yourself, I know that I've been seeing you out at restaurants and I know I've seen you at sporting events and I know, you know, I, I ran into you at the store, the other, you know, all these kinds of things. Let's, let's be an encouragement to them. Would you just let them know that we miss them and that we love them? And that we need them to be the church with us. And uh, let's see if God might not use that to do a little reframing uh, beyond just our, ourselves. Would you receive our benediction this morning? Go forth from this place in the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is those who are able to master their thoughts. Who've learned how to capture rebellious thoughts and make them obedient to Christ. Amen. Thank you.